This is the how-to video for the slash animation command. To use the animation command, you must have the FX module installed and activated, and at least one of the modules listed in the description that contain WebM animations. Once you have loaded your respective modules and restarted Foundry, execute the command animation list, and this will show you all the file names that you can have access to. In general, there are two types of animations. There's an animation that is centered on a point, and then there's an animation that's targeted between a source and a destination. So centered on a point could be like an explosion or some kind of circular effect. And of course, targeted could be anything else, an arrow, a lightning bolt, a magic missile. To begin, I'll show you how to do a centered animation. Now, all animation commands start the same way. The chat command and then a file name pattern. The file name pattern is used to match against the animation file names that we saw using the animation list command. For this example, I'm going to execute an animation on file names that have the word heal followed by the word blue. And since I want this to be a centered animation after the file name pattern, you put the letter C. The animation command will send a private message to yourself, so nobody else sees this, describing what just happened. The source is bog, the destination is fire elemental, the options are centered with zero degree rotation, and then it lists the possible WebMs that it found that matched that file name pattern. And our code randomly picks one of those and displays it. You can continue to refine the file name pattern until you get it down to the animation that you want. In this case, I want to have the animation that has the word heal, followed by the word blue, followed by B-U-R, or for burst. And this is the animation that I want to use. You may have noticed that that animation was kind of large. I actually want to shrink it down some. So to do that, after the C, you put a space, the asterisk, and then the size multiplier. To shrink it, you put values less than one. To expand it, you put values greater than one. This will make it half size. If you have an animation where the orientation is useful, like this Bigby's hand animation, after the C, you can put in the number of degrees to rotate the animation. So to rotate the animation 90 degrees to the right, or 180 degrees, and these commands can be combined. So to make this slightly smaller, I'll add the scale option. And finally, to make this right-handed animation a left-handed animation, you put the letter F immediately after the C and before any rotation. So this will flip the animation. So now it's Big B's left hand. Targeted animations work the same way, but have slightly different options. So I am now going to do an attack from Bog, who is the last actor, to the targeted Fire Elemental. And I'm looking for animations with the word Miss and Blue in them. You can see the possible list of animations have two sets of animations, one annotated for 30 foot and one annotated for 60 foot. That's really just a recommendation if you're playing in D&D. &D. We don't really care about that. What we do care about is the width of the animation which with the JB2A files is encoded in the file name. You can see the top files are 1600 pixels wide and the bottom files are 2800 pixels wide. Our code will determine which size animation will look best and pick those. So you can see the list says best fit width 1600 and below that it's just showing you the animation files that are 1600 pixels wide. And then finally it picks one and randomly displays it. So what the JB2A collection did is they drew nine different variations of a magic missile going to the target. So if you fire off multiple ones, you get a slightly different animation every time. Now, many targeted animations actually don't start at the very left of the animation box and go all the way to the right of the animation box. And you can tell because the animation doesn't quite start on bog and doesn't quite end on the fire elemental. So we need to fix that. First, we're going to shift the animation to the left. And it's only left to right here because I have Bog on the left and the target on the right. But we're going to shift it closer to the source by giving it a minus sign and then some number between 0 and 1. I'm going to go back 10%, minus 0 0.1. 
That moves the animation back a little bit closer to Bog. Actually, it starts right on Bog's text. That looks pretty good. But that's also shifted the animation a little bit farther away from the fire elemental. So I need to stretch the animation. So I'm going to give it a plus, and you can give it any number from 0 to infinity, but I'm going to just start with 10%, so 0 0.1. It's gotten closer, not quite there. Let's make it 20%. There we go. The animation looks pretty good. So our command is shifting the animation to the left 10% and stretching it out 20%. So those are the options for targeted animations. You can shift it towards the source, and you can stretch it towards the destination. The final option is available for both centered and targeted animations, and this indicates how many times you would like it to process this animation. So for this magic missile shot, I'd like it to actually throw out three missiles. I will end the command with 3x. And you can see in the chat, it shows you in the used list those were the animations that were used. And of course, if we do it again, it'll pick different animations. By default, it waits one second between animations. But you can change that by putting a colon and then the number of seconds to wait. So in this case, I'm going to wait a half a second. And the animations overlap, and it gives you that kind of neat barrage effect. Actually, I'm going to change it down to about a third of a second. Yeah, that gives you a really nice barrage effect. And I'll go back and change it from three missiles to five missiles. And finally, just to have fun, I'll switch out the blue and just look for regular so I can get access to all of JBA's different colors. And now I have this rainbow attack. And finally, I want to discuss targeting. For targeted spells, the source is always the last actor. It's displayed down here at the top of your modifier bucket. Usually it's the player's character, in this case, Bog. And the destination will be anything that is targeted using the Foundry's targeting system. However, if you execute a targeted animation command, but you don't have any token targeted, it will just ask you to pick a location and it will draw the animation to that point. If you select on a token, it will target the token, but you're not required to. You can select anywhere on the map and it will draw the animation to that location. And it's still waiting for me to click. So I will click someplace down here, and Bog is going to send his magic missiles into nowhere. The same thing happens with centered animations. If you do not have a target, and you try to execute a centered animation, it will ask for a location. And again, if you click on a token, the token immediately becomes targeted, but you can just click anywhere on the screen. One last thing about centered animations, the animation takes effect over the targeted item. However, if you would prefer that the animation occur over the source, in this case, bog, you can end the animation command with at self. In case you didn't know, targeting tokens as a player is pretty easy. You just double right mouse click on the token and it is targeted. It's not as easy for the GM. You must right mouse click and then select this target icon. And because of this, we've expanded the animation command to be able to use selected tokens as the destinations. Now, a player can normally only select their own token, so this isn't very useful for a player, but it's pretty useful for the GM. So I'm going to select all of these tokens, and I'm going to execute this animation command, which is going to find explosions with the number 400 in them, these are centered animations. I'm going to increase their size by 150%. I'm going to have them execute four times with 1.2 seconds in between each. So I will leave you with, and as always, thank you for watching.